We're going to share the biggest piece of advice that we would have given our high school selves. Think about the admission officer's perspective. You could have spent those extra 50 hours working on something else and try to convince the college why that field that you're good at is important. Hey yo, it's Amy. I have a very special guest today, Olivia. I'm Amy's first friend from Caltech where we bonded <laughs> over our mutual love for BTS. We have both been working with students to help them get into college. So here we're sharing the knowledge from both of us to help you get into your dream school. I came from a magnet school in New Jersey back in high school. And I saw many friends get accepted and rejected from top schools, including Ivy League. So based on my observations from my high school, I've been helping students build extracurriculars for boarding school application and college admissions. So we have a very great list of questions and some of them are actually from you that will guide the discussion. And at the end, we're gonna share the biggest piece of advice that we would have given our high school selves. Let's, Let's go! What are the components that go into your college admissions? So I think at a very, very high level, we can consider the stats. This will include GPA, class rigor like APs, uh, standardized testing like SAT and ACT, we have the academic achievements, so like competitions, research, personal projects and internship, things you do in summer, that's prestigious, activities that show your personality like essay, leadership, club involvement, arts, sports, and music. How would you weigh the importance of those components. Yeah, so I think we should emphasize that GPA and SAT will get you most of the way there and in that sense it's the most important thing. However, um, you need a competitive edge beyond just GPA and the stats if you want to get into a top school and that's where a spike comes in. Everyone might have different opinions on which stats are good enough but I personally think like rough guidelines like 1550 for SAT or 35 for ACT if you aim for top colleges and for GPA unless your school is particularly competitive you like likely want straight A's. Yeah, there's no blanket yes or no for if something is that important. For example, I was valedictorian and that's kind of necessary for me personally because I was from a public school. And I went to a more competitive magnet school like I mentioned before and my unweighted GPA was actually less than 3.9 and I think I even had a B some, somewhere in the four years of high school. However, since I went to a more competitive high school, the colleges understood that it would have been much harder for me to get straight A's and still gave me a chance. Yeah, so overall it depends on your background. Your GPA, SAT stats are all important and they do matter, but it's not really about getting the perfect. If they don't meet a certain threshold, those stats could be the things that keep you out, but they will not be the things that get you into the school. So essentially, if all else is created equal, you still want to maximize everything as much as you can, but only if it's worth your time and you have a balance. So if you spend 100 hours to get a 36 on the ACT, and perhaps only 50 hours and you get a 35, that's completely fine because you could have spent those extra 50 hours working on something else that's perhaps more important or unique. Yeah, so what's that other thing that we can be working on? Yes, good question. That is the spike. How important is it to have a spike and how do you develop one? Yeah, so I don't think spike is important to the point that you should sacrifice your GPA and standardized stats, but spike is almost all that matters after you have all the basic stats because a lot of top candidates, they already have all the same basic stats. You can start developing one by thinking about if you were the admission officer, what would you admit yourself for? And what is your unique edge and why are you good at that? To give an example, in my case, uh, while I was particularly passionate about math, I felt like my achievements were not strong enough for the top schools. I didn't qualify for USIMO and I didn't go to any uh, prestigious math camps. So instead, I was also exposed to business and social science more than average due to the uniqueness of my current school curriculum. So I decided to spin myself as more of a data scientist who tries to use math to quantitatively understand the world by combining into the social science. And this way, I would not be directly compared to other students who are going for the mathematician model with stronger math awards than me. So that's a very important key takeaway from Olivia's example. She was smart in that she took a combination of two areas and perhaps in one area, she wouldn't be super strong just using that, but because she used a combination, that in and of itself packaged it in a way such that it was more like a spike. And for me, even though I was relatively strong in math with competitions and, you know, promised math camp, but I actually did a ton of other activities instead of just combining two. So therefore, by having math and then a ton of other things, those other things were diluting that supposed math spike that I could have had as shown in my other videos. Generally, colleges would want a math student and a philosophy student 
and a music student. But if you're okay in math, philosophy, and music, the college might not find it as compelling to admit someone that's more well-rounded. Not to say that it's impossible to get in if you're well-rounded, but it's harder. Perhaps a good exercise for all of us is to think about a category where you think you have a good chance of being maybe like top 100 or like top end people in the world, and then convincing the college why that category will contribute to the campus community and the greater world. Yeah, it's super important to consider that for any existing things you have to spin it in a way because at the end of the day, it's really competitive to get into these top schools, so you want to be memorable. Next, we'll go into some concerns that some of you guys had about becoming or appearing the ideal candidate. How do you show passion in one area and how important is it to relate to your intended major? A really helpful um, perspective to have in all these questions is you should think about the admission officer's perspective if you are evaluating yourself. So when they want to see commitment, do you think they really want you doing the same thing over four years? Do you think that's like the crux of it? I'm not an admission officer, but I think they rather want to see a consistent journey of self-discovery and um, a lot of efforts put into exploration and growth. A journey of self-discovery is still commitment. So overall, you want to show an upward growth curve. Even if you only do one thing for all four years, but you're being stagnant, that's still not as impressive as if you were doing other things, but maybe had an upward curve. But a clear way that you could show passion is definitely through your summers, like with an internship or research experience. And that's because summer is literally one of the few times you have free time and colleges think, well, if you were truly passionate about that, then you would find any time you have to do it more because it's actually fun for you. So speaking of internship and research, I made a complete guide about how to get an opportunity. So make sure to check out the link in the description. Amy's guide can be very helpful for things like that. And I think it's also never too late to show commitments. So even undergrads and adults change majors and careers all the time. And you aren't evaluated for how right you are in the first guess you take of what your interests and passion are. Like what are the chances you know at like ninth grade exactly I wanna do this for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. However, I think it is important for you to constantly think about who you are and start exploring options and growing yourself. Mm -hmm, totally agree. Like my friend, a very experienced college consultant, Jason, said in a previous video, maybe your commitment is more like commitment to self-discovery and finding yourself. Speaking of the major, would you say it's important to already be decided on a major or a career path by the time college application season comes up? It's good to show a coherent picture of what you want to do in college so you're more memorable and the admission officers can get a very clear picture of how you might fit into the campus community. However, that being said, there's like no pressure. You don't need to worry too much if you're not very sure about a particular path yet. Plenty of people change majors during their undergrad or even pick career unrelated to their major after graduating. And colleges totally understand that you're still very young and you're exploring different things. Basically, you wanna think about getting into college as getting your foot in the door. And then later you can always change career paths. I'm literally not using my major in any shape or form now from chemical engineering going into consulting. How do you stand out at a competitive high school? Yeah, so I think this is a perfect question for me because I did my college applications at a pretty uh, competitive high school. And on the bright side, the good news is your school is likely already a feeder school for top colleges as in the colleges want students from your high school and they already know you have a lot of potential even if you're not the valedictorian or have the best grades. However, you do need to prove yourself in the internal competition. Looking at like upperclassmen, what kind of profiles got into the colleges that you're interested in can be very helpful. And your GPA might not have to be a 4.0, but for example, in my high school's case, I think we needed to be within the top 15 to 20% in terms of both GPA and extracurriculars to have a good shot at a competitive college. And that there will be like a clear internal line at some point where your GPA is not no longer good enough. So it depends on how many people generally get accepted from your school each year. Students will likely all be high achieving. So you want to think outside the box to make something that's probably not there yet. Like you could start a club or create some activity in an existing club. How do you maximize your chances of getting into a top school with perhaps not as good stats? 
unfortunately, this might be very hard and might mostly be log based, but it's not impossible. So I guess in this case, the crux of the solution would be to convince colleges that you have more potential than what you currently show on paper. Mm -hmm. And why colleges care about that is because they want to know that they can have a higher graduation rate. Like Olivia said about showing you have the potential, it's therefore even more important to get stellar SAT or ACT scores if you don't have as good grades. And some other things that might help if you have a good story why your situation back then was different than who you are now, like personal hardships or medical emergency, it would be good to spin them as a growth story and communicate so the college uh, of officers understand that you have more potential and that was a special situation back then. Yeah, and then even more like logistically, you could look into applying via a program like Early Decision, which typically has easier chances. You can also look at how each school views stats and see if your stats can be higher for certain schools. Like for example, some schools allow super scoring while some schools don't. So if your super score score for standardized testing is much higher than your one sitting, maybe targeting schools that allow super scoring can be a good option. And I guess another example, in my case, my freshman year GPA was low lower than the rest of my GPA, and that was the crux of why I didn't have a 3.9. However, I think California schools, especially UCs, they don't look at your ninth grade grades when you evaluate. So I had much better luck with California colleges than uh, Ivy Leagues in terms of my admission results. And you want to think about your intended major or what kind of school you're applying to. So if you want to do engineering, then perhaps you should actually get A's in math and maybe your grades in history don't matter as much. And I think this can also connect to you want to really sell your spike. So even if you don't have the perfect stats, if you're the best candidate with the stats and if they cannot find equally good or better candidates with the same spike, the college will still want you for the spike that you have. Have, so you can still appear very attractive to colleges by having a unique and strong spike. Mm -hmm, for sure. Does everyone need to show leadership? So I don't think so. So we once again have to think about why do colleges want to see leadership? What do they want to see through leadership activities? And I think to be more exact, they want to see collaboration and proactiveness to better your community through your leadership activities. We want to look a little deeper than just the surface level of, oh, we need leadership. Oh, we need a community. We need this. We need to think about why they might be asking for that and whether that applies to yourself and what your goal is. In terms of portraying that leadership, what happens when you have a student who is perhaps more introverted but still needs to show leadership and proactiveness? So I think for introverted students, the biggest concern is like a lot of leadership, you have to be voted into office by a popular vote. And if you just don't have as many friends, maybe that's a little difficult or scary for you to enter in the first place. So I think one option is, which is the option that I use, there's leadership opportunities that are determined more by academic excellence or by appointment. Some examples might be like math and science teams, they might want someone who has good track record and competitions to lead them instead of having a popular vote or different honor societies on campus. When I was in high school, I was a co-president for Spanish Honor Society and I wasn't voted into my position, rather I applied and I was appointed by my Spanish teachers. I think some other options are you can create a club and found it and by that sense you will naturally be the president and this can connect back to Amy's point about taking initiative and doing something creative and different that your school does not already have. Yeah, you don't have to be loud and talk to a big crowd to show that you made some difference. For example, I didn't do this, which I wish I did, but my school AC system was like really bad and it probably wasted a lot of energy. So I could have been proactive and behind the scenes talk to admin or someone to make that difference. And that shows that then once you get to college campus, perhaps you will also make a positive difference to their school. You can definitely spearhead any uh, problems, actions, or projects. Maybe you can enter like a competition together and the role you naturally play for your team is a team captain, even though you wouldn't have officially have a team captain position. Activities and events like this you can use and talk about in your essay to show your leadership without having an official title. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. The moment you've all been waiting for, what is the biggest piece of advice for how students should approach high school to prepare for college admissions? If you could go back in time, what would you tell yourself? So I think this advice is really overdone, but I think it's kind of true. So try to be yourself. I think this is what everyone says. Hmm. But to be more specific, I would say try to be yourself in your best light. Everyone has a side that is super impressive and likable, but it might be hard to show that on the application given how short of a time each admission officer takes a look at your application. There's no correct answer or like a single correct answer for you on how you should present yourself, but there are strategies that can emphasize only your good parts and make you stand out among other top candidates and make you memorable. You're the best person who understands your strengths and weaknesses and create a strategy for yourself. 
don't like blindly follow the one leadership, one extracurricular model, but really think about who you are and why would you get in if you were to get in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, have more confidence in yourself. And to my younger self, like high school Amy, I am someone who's a little too curious about trying everything and I easily feel FOMO. So I would say don't feel pressure to do everything. You can explore and still be diverse and have fun, but maybe it's worth getting better in existing activities rather than adding on other things that you may not be as interested in. For example, I had a friend who got into Caltech who did absolutely zero volunteering when everyone thinks like you have to do volunteering, right? But essentially, he just showed that he was good in the things like coding, which is what Caltech actually cares about for his case. Awesome! So thanks so much, Olivia! Thank you for having me on the video. Yes, of course. It was amazing. And... Oh, a surprise! Yes, I have this zodiac year of the rabbit hat for you <laughs> thank you you should have given it to me in the beginning so i could wear it in the video <laughs> okay. that was a surprise oh, thank you for the <laughs> gift it's a little folded but yes so i designed with my friend year of the rabbit and year of the tiger and oh. whatever's coming up for the next year so yeah you can check that out in the description as well but basically being proud of our heritage. I think this is very useful, especially in the summer, because it protects you against the sun. Mm. And the color is white, which I think scientifically reflects light. Uh. So it attracts <laughs> less heat compared to darker shades. Yes, for sure. Impromptu bonus yeah. skincare tips. And we'll be answering your comments down below. So make sure to drop us a like and a comment. And of course, GPA and stats are like a baseline for you to get into any top school. So if you want to check out how I got a top GPA, then click here. Bye! Bye. Bye. Have an let. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> they can keep you in, but they won't be the thing that keeps you out. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a... We're almost done. Wow. Wow.